Oh, hi everyone. Welcome back to Not Another Bonsai Channel. Well, I'm filming this at the end of February and it is unbelievably warm for this time of year. It is 15, 16 degrees. That's our, our, our daytime temperatures. The nighttime temperatures are around about six, seven degrees Celsius, which is just ridiculously warm for this time of year. But what it has meant is that a lot of the trees are waking up from their dormant period and they're budding out and breaking bud and even leafing out. And there are even bumblebees flying around. So what it has meant is I have had to bring the repotting um, season, I guess, uh, forward and I've had to repot a load of my trees. So today I thought we'll repot yet another tree and this time around I thought it might be a Japanese maple. Right, so this is the tree just in here. This is the Japanese maple that I was thinking of repotting in today's video. So I just have this old baking tray here just as a way to keep the surface clean and also collect a lot of the soil. So we can see with this tree, I have a little model car here. Um, I usually like to put little characters and cars and I've, you know, horses, dinosaurs and all other kind of figures alongside my trees. And I just think it gives a bit of atmosphere. I mean, I, it, it's kind of a somewhat of a landscape. You have the rock here that I just found in a local park and the abandoned car here kind of gives somewhat of a an, an illusion of a, a landscape but um it's not a permanent thing i think we, we'll take the car off for now i uh, will also take the pebble off and we'll also take this rock off so then we need to see how well will this tree come out of the pot well it's been in this pot for just over a year i think just over a year and it's not growing in the best of soil you can see it's pretty much like mud uh, there is a drainage screen or a couple of drainage screens just on the base but you can see there are white roots you know there are white tips to these roots so it is growing but you know look at this this uh, soil I mean this is like sandy sandy mud so just working our way around the tree yeah I mean this is we did have rain this morning but even so I mean this is absolutely drenched it's so, you know, it's, it's like mud. It's really not a good, a good way to start a tree off. I mean, the tree is healthy, it's budding out, but my goodness, you know, this really isn't good. So I've taken away a lot of soil from the root ball. I think what I do now is I just give this a dunk in a, a pot of water. We'll see if we can get off this remaining, remaining soil or remaining mud and see what kind of a root system we have. So we can see, you know, despite that funky smell that we had when we came to, you know, taking the mud away from this, this tree, we don't actually have a bad root system. There are plenty of fibrous roots and uh, a few bl black roots in here that I think if I get my pruners, which uh, are my pruners now, they're just in here. If I get these, I just better come in here and just take these away because these there's nothing coming off of that at all. We don't need that. There's one that divides into two here. Again, there's nothing coming off of that one. Well, there's something coming off that one, but it's not looking good. Uh, all of these nice fine roots. There's a root coming off just here, which doesn't look very good, but we do have a root below it that does. So let's just cut that there like so. Get rid of that. Uh, there's a root in here that looks very rotten, so let's get rid of that. There's a black root in here, which doesn't look very good. There's very little coming off of it, so I think I'm going to come all the way in here and get rid of that. Yeah, all of these roots don't look too bad. We have a bit of a stump in here. Let's try and find out where that goes. That goes all the way in here. Now there is. Is that a root coming off of that or is it now it's come beside? So what we can do, we just come in here. I try to I don't want to interfere too much with that root, just just come beside it. So if we come just in here like so and get rid of that. That's that one gone. So all in all, you know, with removing those those dead remains of roots and stumps and things, the root system doesn't look that bad. What I'm gonna try and do is just come in here and just cut these back. It's making the root mass far more compact. It doesn't need to have 
routes this long. These are way too long. Let's just come around the other side. Just like so. So yeah, not a, a lot of root, but you know, a fair amount of root has come off. Many stubs and things, and a few fibrous roots that we just cut from the tip. So nothing, nothing too heavy, uh, but yeah, a fair amount of root nonetheless. Right, so I have two pots here because I wasn't sure how big the root mass was going to be on this tree, and it's always good to have a selection uh, because you know you never know, and until you get the root or the tree out of the pot, you never quite know how the roots are going to look and how it will look in each pot. So. We look at this part, if I put it in that one, there's plenty of space for that to grow. Of course, it is limited because it's only factoring in the roots that are on one side. If we did want to develop roots on the other side, it's not really giving it a whole lot of space. I mean, there is space in there, but not a whole lot. On the other hand, if we put it into a pot this big, you can see there's ample space for that to grow. And of course, you have ample space for new roots to develop. So the question is, do we put it in this pot that could potentially be a bit too big or do we put it in this pot where it would look good but wouldn't necessarily encourage roots to develop on that side where we don't have any roots uh, to be honest i'm leaning more towards this one i think this would be this is a better one for the future and of course it does mean that we can put the tree a bit more central in the pot whereas with this one it will have to be shunted to one side because you're factoring in all of this well, all of this root mass has to fit into the pot. Yeah, so I think the decision has been made. It's going to be that pot. So with that idea in mind, I think we'll put that pot just to the side. And then we'll just use a little piece of drainage screen just to cover the hole just in the bottom of the pot. I'm not really a fan of wiring drainage screen into pots. I don't really think it serves really any purpose necessarily because I think that you just grab some soil, put that on top, that will holds that drainage screen in in place absolutely fine and uh, I do feel that there are few issues when it comes to wiring a screen into a pot because of course what happens if the roots get entangled with it then when you go to unwire the screen from the pot or maybe you might forget and you might go to yank the tree out the pot and then it might sort of entangle itself and it's just yeah it's just uh, a, a lot of awkwardness that might come from doing something that doesn't necessarily need to be done but of course you know if you're a fan of doing that and you like doing that by all means do it but for me personally I just I don't like doing it we'll just add a little bit more soil to the pot oh just in case you're wondering what the soil mix is this is my new soil uh, my new bonsai soil medium blend I guess you could say so whereas before I was using compost that was 40% uh, compost with 60% grit what I'm now using is this mix which is it must be 25% perlite, 25% of a perlite vermiculite mix, which is already pre-mixed when you buy it. Then uh, so that's 50%. Then you have about 20% compost, 10% uh, uh, pine bark, which is just this chopped up pine bark. And then the other 20% is a very fine grit. Right, so we just need to position this tree into the pot now. Um, there's only roots on one side so all we really need to do is just decide what kind of an angle we would like the tree to be at or grow at and where in the pot we would like it to be well as I said before I would like roots to come from this one side so I think we we'll make the tree somewhat central and uh, should we put a lean on it would it suit a lean ah uh, I don't know, I mean, may maybe a subtle lean. I, I don't think it needs a heavy lean. I mean, these branches do come out as a fork, you know, coming up. So, you know, you certainly wouldn't want anything like that. Um, and if you did lean it in that direction, this one is coming, almost going horizontal, which isn't ideal. But maybe a subtle lean, maybe something like that. So I'm just cont going to continue putting soil around the root mass just like so and then once we have plenty let's just spin that around so you have a better angle there you get so once we have plenty there we can then get our chopstick and just poke that in and make sure that it's in good you know that it has good contact with the roots 
And I think what I might just do, just to keep that tree in place and make sure that it doesn't rock around too much before the roots fully establish, I'm just going to put a couple of pebbles, one there and one there, just to hold the tree securely in the pot until those roots establish. Well, with that, guys, I think that is that Japanese maple tree all, all potted up. Uh, looking kind of good. Um, had a very interesting root system on it, but yeah, hopefully roots do develop on the other side and we do have a very nice radial root system in the future. Well, anyway, that's it for today, guys. So yeah, thanks for joining me. And as always, take it easy, have a great day, and I will see you on the next one.